and it'll check too. Check. Everybody right. do a little. Mic check, mic test it that way you guys can. Um, and so. Let them do a microphone check. <laughs> testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Yeah. Testing, testing. What's going on, everybody? Super excited to be with you guys today. Sheree and I have special guests. Some guests that we really, really are fond of. Um, so that you guys know really quickly, many of you guys have heard us talk about Mike. Mike Kelly uh, is the one responsible for us getting here smoothly. show this is Mike that's Stephanie and Mike really was instrumental in us getting here all the time people ask me Mike how is it that you guys have made such a brave move and they think what we've done is brave and I like to say what we did was prepared right. and Sheree and you had a relationship online for ooh, a year and a half y'all were going back and forth before we actually got here before we actually got here yeah so so you guys, your company made uh, that transition so smooth, and uh, that's what you do. But today, we're really here to talk to you guys about the amazing journey that you guys have been on when it comes to parenting. Right, so, because cause Mike, you're not Panamanian. Yeah, that's, that's it. In case you haven't noticed, <laughs> he may look a lot. I feel like I'm turning into one. Right, right, right. But yeah, I'm not. Yeah, and his Spanish is so fluent, I promise you that. Okay. Stephanie, you're a Panamanian, and you... You have been here most of your life. I know you guys originated here from Peru, I think it was, or you were born here. I was born here, but my family is from Peru and Germany. Yeah, in okay. Germany. So here's what I want y'all to know off the break. We've got a lot of international flair going on here. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk parenting in Panama. I know that a lot of expats have been giving us the questions, and we like to tell people we're not relocation specialists. We can turn you on to people and get you connected in different areas. And one of the unique things that Mike and Stephanie brings to this table is that their kids are plugged into a system that's causing them to thrive. Right. And as an expat and a Panamanian, you guys have figured out, sort of navigated the, the ways of making that a little easier. Um, there's a bunch of different levels, public and private. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if homeschooling is big in Panama. It depends. Um, a lot of people that live outside of the city, like in some of the beach towns, yeah. uh, do homeschool. Okay. You know, because it's just there aren't many schools there. So it's growing in popularity for sure just because of the growing expat. Community. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can leave this off, Stephanie, I want to have you introduce yourself to the audience, tell people a little bit about yourself. We can get into how you guys met. But I really want people to understand your journey took you from Panama to the States and then back on your schooling journey. But it was really important for you to get your kids plugged into the right school. Happened to be the one you went to as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure that there were options and you there guys talked to the uh, to, to the audience a little bit about yourself and, and how has this journey of parenting in Panama really helped? Yeah. Well, um, the best tip I can give is to live close to the school where your kids want to go. Um, in our case, we don't, uh, but uh, the school I went... Don't do what they do. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's very difficult because of the traffic and... I mean, we live in Panama Pacifico, which means you have to cross the bridge. We love that area, but the school we put our kids, it's, uh, like you said, where I went, and I have that, you know, that feeling of... Of what I went through, I want them to leave that too, mm -hmm. which is good companionship. They have uh, small classrooms, um, small groups, and very, very good education. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about the name of the school. You went there as a kid. Your kids are plugged into there. But then also, let's talk about the schools in the different areas. Mm -hmm. Because in Panama, you have public school, and then you have private schools. And a lot of expats have their children in private school. Mm -hmm. But it's because of the journey that they want their kid to end up with. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, for expats especially, you know, there there are a lot of private and international schools here, and it's a good. I mean, it's a good environment because you're with, uh, you know, you're learning Spanish. Uh, you, you know, also, you're with other kids that are kind of going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but the education at the private schools here is really good. Um, you know, and, and they're 
all over the place. I mean, where we live in Panama Pacifico, there are like three private schools. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not only expats that are going to these schools, you know, uh, but, it, you know, when you, got all, when you have all of these kids that are coming from all over the place, um, it's just, it creates like a, a good bond of a network, you know, so these kids, you know, kind of go through school together and, you know, they, they go out into the world and they, yeah. they're all over the place. So I think here in Panama, since it's so small, mm -hmm. uh, that's really important, you know what I mean, is that creating networks, getting to know people, I mean, you take that with you forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of networks, go ahead, Sheree. Yeah, so Stephanie, you are from Panama. You mm -hmm. grew up here, so having grown up here, you moved, you went to the States to go to school. What was it about Panama that made you want to come back and raise your kids here? Um, the quality of life and the, you know, you can send your kid to a private school mm -hmm. for, you know, a very good price. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, the, the school we, we send our kids to, uh, is three hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and it's private, and it's trilingual. One of, the best, one of the best schools. Wow! Well, it's actually like if you uh, choose in in high school, um, they divide between letters and science. Okay. Okay. So if you, I don't know, if I'm saying it correctly, letter. Yeah, yeah letters. like the arts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Arts and, and, and science. And science. Okay. So okay. they specialize in one of those two. Yeah. Kind of, so depending you, on what your your strengths they do are. They test. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then they will guide you. Like you are more into this, and yeah. that, and and then in, in the arts part, uh, mm -hmm. you you can learn four language. Oh. Mm -hmm. And science, is, you know, like, <laughs> but you know, like everybody that graduates from this school, it's so well prepared like you you will see like the best attorneys doctors wow. or engineers there um from this type of school concept wow. it's yeah. very old school it's not like the newer schools where mm -hmm. they they're outdoors like more i don't know like new type of mm -hmm. teaching but i like it because they teach a lot of discipline and um i feel they're doing good you know uh, they will be there until you know we we feel they're comfortable you know right, I, want, right. I, I want to them to give the extra mile. I don't want them to be too relaxed. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. So Mike, you went to school in the US. Mm -hmm. So to compare, and I know like the school days are different yes, here compared to in the States. The, the, so what are some major differences you can see between the US schools? And um, you know, in, from what I've seen, it's very similar. You okay. know, besides the fact that, you know, the, the school years like in reverse of what it is in the U.S. <laughs> so when you say it's in reverse, explain to so, what you mean by reverse. So, yeah, so the summer vacation starts in December. And right. so they, they're, they're out for, for summer for three months from December. December, on. January, yeah. February, yeah. even March. I feel like they're... They, no, they begin in, in the beginning of March. They yeah. go back to beginning right of March. Right after Carnavales. Yeah. Okay. So there's that part. But you know, as far as the education level, like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's right on par. I mean, mm -hmm. these kids are... And, and, they're all yeah, we've met your kids. They're they're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they get it from it. No, well, it, 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 come on, come on. Let's be no, and, and 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 I and I'll be honest. They're 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 well-rounded kids, yeah. highly sociable. Yeah. And when you talk about the discipline part, one of the first things I notice about your kids, they yeah. they are not afraid to interact with strangers. So. Yeah. And that's a quality that I think that the environment yeah, the that skills. they're in, their mm -hmm. social skills are solid, and, yeah. and you almost feel like that they're, they're not they don't display the whole i'm uncomfortable around people mm -hmm. they're very engaged yeah. and, and, um, and we you know we get them out like you know we're out at the ranch on yeah. weekends like yeah. we go out we get them around other people and we've been doing that since they were very young so they are comfortable you know mm -hmm. uh, and, and sometimes they're, they can be a little shy but they open <laughs> up right, um, right but i think the, the important thing is just when they're not in school to expose them to you know things outdoors sports mm -hmm. they're you know sophie's doing dance class tyler's playing basketball and soccer so those things just you know it just gives it makes them a little bit more well-rounded well yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah for those of you guys who just may be tuning in i'm glenn p brooks jr that's the lovely light-skinned sheree a brooks jr and we're sitting here with mike and and uh, stephanie kelly and one of the things just so that you know you know mike's an expat um, he and stephanie met uh, actually in the u.s and um, it was after a run in Costa Rica that this one did, came back to the U.S. Yeah. You came to school in, in the U.S. Y'all met in college. Yeah. 
He macked her with his Spanish skills. <laughs> she decided to play along because he was looking a little bit, you know, maybe desperate. No. <laughs> but the thing was, you guys actually, out of college, stayed in the U.S. for a little while. Yeah. I mean, this is prior to kids' school age. True. Yeah, yeah. So by the time they got to be of school age, they'd done their entire school here in Panama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would you say, for an expat that's come in my what should be their concerns in terms of moving like we know people in our community who literally have come here with teenagers yeah. and one of the biggest challenges is getting their teenagers connected. plugged in yeah. and get them connected with other teenagers panama only has four million people in the entire country yeah. you know half of those people roughly live here in the city yeah. but it, it it you have to be really intentional like can you talk to people a little bit about what that looks like for you guys yeah. over y'all's journey yeah, you know, when, when kids move here, like they integrate real fast. Like, mm -hmm. you'd be, you know, it, it, you'd be surprised when you think, oh, you know, it's going to be hard. And you know, friends, they make friends really fast. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you got to give them a little bit more credit. Sometimes you, you worry a little bit too much about that. Um, and, and another thing I think would be to get them into, you know, sports, mm -hmm. things outside of school. You know, it's not just being in school. You, you know, get them out there. What, whatever their interests are, you can find that here and. I mean, that's going to you know, get them out there to meet more people. Um, but I would say, you know, that's the main thing. Get them into a good school. Do your research. I mean, there are a lot of good schools. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of school with expats, yeah. students, so okay. they understand. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I just switched uh, Tyler to a new basketball academy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, it's kind of the same scenario, right? Like, new people. Mm -hmm. and, and they were so welcoming, you know? Wow. Like they were like, um, go play with us. Like I was really like happy about that because you know like we want to uh, make him better in basketball and sure. that's a very good school. So I was kind of nervous about it, uh -huh. but I I was pretty like happy. Okay, yeah. it turned yeah. out. Yeah. 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 So so when you talk about and this is a question I've gotten from other experts or people mm -hmm. thinking about moving here, it's like okay, yeah. So there's no necessarily a YMCA or mm -hmm. how do they find? How do they find these activities yeah. to get their kids involved in? Because yeah. there's no yellow pages in Panama. Yeah. There's no, you know, they don't know where to go. Yeah. I mean, what are there but, some but tips okay. you guys can give them? The equivalent of YMCA, I think, would be Ciudad de Saber, the city of knowledge. Yeah. And that's yeah. where I put uh, Tyler. Okay. That's good. They have a very good baseball. Uh, okay. In, in all in the same zone. They have baseball, basket, swimming. Okay. Um, what else they have? I even said boxing. Yeah. Um, I love that right across from Balboa. Balboa School. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really good, uh, so a lot of their, a lot of their mm -hmm. students go there. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't know that. So that would be would, would would be the equivalent of what we would call yeah. the YMCA Probably. or a community like center. A community yeah, center yeah, yeah. That in that area. So yeah. what about? Yeah. Um, I know Mike, you get around the city. You're in the city a lot. Are there any places like that here in Panama City? Well, that, that that is, is like like downtown. Like that's Balboa. It's it's in Clayton. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably you know, 10, 15 minutes from yeah, downtown. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. It's like yeah. right when you're going towards the uh, the canal, the uh -huh. visitor center to, mm -hmm. to the right. Got it. Yeah. And, and here in Panama, it's like you don't have in the, in the states. You have all these organized leagues. You know, right. little league baseball, basketball. Right. It's so easy to find that stuff. Right. right. So it is a little bit harder. So they here. don't have those types they, of places. They do, but you have to kind of know where to look. Okay. Uh, but you know, everyone's so connected now. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You get here and you get into these WhatsApp groups. Right. And you know, just ask. Right. It's all you have to do is ask. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Like I know here, we live in Alpha Grejo down at the park at um, uh, Andres Bay. Uh, Andres Bay. Andres Bay Park. We always see the kids down there playing, and sometimes they look like um, uniforms, so there's some type of organized something. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess. If I were a parent looking, I would probably just go up and ask them, hey, mm -hmm. how do you yeah, right. join? Because I may not know where to go and find it. So I think you got to do a little extra work yeah. right. than right. you would in the States. It's yeah. not as easy to find, but once you yeah. ask, and that's one thing I can say here in Panama, when you ask people questions, they're willing to help you. Yeah. They're yeah, always that willing far, to help yeah. you. One thing I do want to talk about maybe and kind of touch on, because this becomes important, is the language barrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got kids coming from the U.S. They don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. But obviously, some of these places that they're going to, how, how would you suggest to parents to help integrate their kids that way and get them, you know, maybe 
feeling comfortable about not knowing the language but engaging anyway? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> first of all, before you come, I would be getting them you know, into Spanish classes. A lot of kids in the States are like, they've had, they've gone through the basics. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but they pick it up way faster Quicker. Yeah. than we do. Yeah. So you, you just got to kind of throw them in there, to be honest. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, you just, and most of the kids are speak English mm -hmm. in the private schools. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I, I don't think there is a private school that doesn't teach the kids English from very young. So, I mean, with Sophie and Tyler, uh, their friends speak perfect English, English and their parents yeah. don't. You know, oh, they, wow. like wow. They, they, they speak very broken English, but their kids are speaking perfect. Yeah. And that is just from learning at school. Uh, but if you're an expat, if you're coming down here with no Spanish, uh, it's just getting in there, you know, they'll, you, you'll learn it. I yeah. mean, it's, you're, you're so exposed and immersed in it every day. Mm -hmm. So that is a worry for some people, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. But I think it's just, you know, that's what you got to do. So it sounds like really for them, for kids, going to school is going to be, because so many, they teach English in the school. Yeah. Most of their students, the teachers, everybody speaks English. So they're not going to have as hard a job a as, 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 we we do. Do. as we do. They're going to be popular, they, trust me. Yeah. Right. And, and, and they'll pick it up like that. You're like, that's not fair. Right. You know, like, <laughs> right. You know my, my kids speak better Spanish than me. I'm like, I've been speaking for way longer trying to learn this, and you guys are just speaking perfect. That's not, that's not right. fair. Right. 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 They soak it up like a sponge. Yeah. One of the things that I think that is really cool is when, um, you know, kids are coming from another place is educating them on the front end yeah. about where they're going mm -hmm. and what they may it, it get involved in. I think yeah. that um, I grew up um, on a military, uh, I went to high school and middle school and high school on a military installation. And although it was a public high school part of the county, um, the kids, most of them were military kids. Mm -hmm. And it would always shock me how many countries and how many places they had traveled yeah. and been around the world because of their parents who were, you know, military. But also, what I learned about them very quickly is most of them spoke several languages. Mm -hmm. Although English was their primary language, they, they could fit in. So one of the things I want to encourage you guys, if you're parents, is do your due diligence. Make sure, and that's one of the things I can say that about coming here. You know, working with Mike, and when we, as you know, we don't, our kids are grown, so we didn't have that that challenge. But when you do your research on the front end, and you work with groups of people who are connected to the things that you're you're, you're concerned about, I think it helps to ease some of that tension. Yeah. And I think that the other part is, is that do me a favor and don't put your fears on them. Exactly. Right. What you said about these children learning yeah. quickly. It is amazing how quickly they pick up and what they yeah. will learn and then come home and actually teach yeah, it. I, I, I was going to say that, like, you know, if you're moving as an adult to a, another country, it's kind of nerve wracking. You're like, mm -hmm. I have to learn this language. Like, how is this going to be if I, I don't speak, you know, so if you speak no Spanish, you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, this is going to be uh, interesting. And you, kinda, <laughs> and, and, you know what I mean? Like, and then you, right. you put that on your kid. So yeah, that's right. what you said, yeah. like, but. Your kid, they're resilient. I'm yeah, telling you, like, yeah. they will get out there and learn it. Yeah. I mean, you got to, you know, just get them out there and they'll learn it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about private schools. Now, there are a lot of pub the public schools. What are some of the differences um, between private and public other mm -hmm. than, you know, we know there are usually more advantages to private school. But um, how do the public schools operate here? Do they learn English? And no. Uh, honestly, uh, public school is not an option. If you, okay. you're you're um, for your kid in a school, only private. Okay. Yeah. For okay. for if you're moving, it's to it's very bad education. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just it underfunded. You know, okay. And um, you know the, the it's sad that like the facilities are just falling apart. Okay. In most yeah. of them. So okay. Yeah, I mean, I, you're, that's good to know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. So if you are planning on coming here to Panama, just be prepared. Yeah to enroll your children into a public school and like a you said, private school. I mean a private school, yes, private school, not what public, I, private, private. What I do on um, my, my relocation tours for people that are bringing their kids is I take them to the schools to meet the directors. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So I do that. I've done that here in Panama City, in Boquete, mm -hmm. um, where you go and meet and they tour you, take you around the school, mm -hmm. meet teachers, go in all the classrooms, see what they mean. It's, it's a really good way to yeah. kind of like see, because yeah. the kids go in there and they're like, wow, this is like, 
my back home. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it's like you know you kind of have something in your mind like it's what, what's that going to be like you know and you, wow this is and you see all the kids running mm -hmm. around and you hear them speaking English yeah, so, mm -hmm. and things like that so it's, that's that'd be very helpful. Uh, so another question um, in regard to the schools I know sometimes parents and we went through this actually with our son when he came to live with us when he was twelve in enrolling him in a new school in an upper state mm -hmm. whether or not the grade he would transfer from the same grade to the other mm -hmm. you know the same or whether yeah. they is there um like entrance exams for the private school do they you know how do they accept american students in do they mm -hmm. usually place them you know if they place them in the same grade or is there a test or yeah. something for them to there's accept? a there's for sure a test okay. uh, but and I mean, if you want to keep the American calendars, there's plenty of American schools mm -hmm. here. Okay. So it will be the thing, you know? Okay. It wouldn't be a thing. It, there aren't too many barriers with most private schools if they're international. If you're coming here, like, you, the kids will have to take a test, and, and there are some things, but, I mean, like, with the school that our kids go to, it's like, if you aren't, like, an ex-alumni of that school, it can't get in there, but that's just how that, that school particular is. school, right. Other yeah. schools are, like, you know, they're trying to get... Students. Uh, students yeah. from outside panel, yeah. so yeah. they're not going to make it too hard. Right. Yeah. 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 Let's talk a little bit again about price, and I don't want that to go over people's heads, yeah. um, because where we're from, um, <laughs> three hundred dollars a month is is, is highly doable. You have to and, and, for a babysitter. And quite frankly, <laughs> childcare is worth it's cost more. Than that. Yeah. Than that so yeah. let's talk about sort of across the board. What can people expect to pay? And I know every yeah. school is different. But what have you guys What's seen in terms of range? The range will be probably from 300 a month in private school, right? Mm -hmm. 300 a month, and the most expensive, I think, will be 1,000. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. There are schools that are, that are like 1,200. That's 1200 the most. Maybe yeah, 1,200 is like the most expensive. They also yeah. require uh, like a donation. Donation. Uh, yeah. Where you put together, you put yeah. like a certain oh. amount that goes to the school, and that just, mm -hmm. you know, like you have to do that. Right. And right. You don't get that back. It's And it can be. Five thousand, ten thousand. Yeah, you know, it could be, it could be um, like ten thousand. It's yeah. in very good school. Got yeah. it, got yeah. it. And that's just one time for each kid. Yeah. Right. So that's another thing. You know, that can be, uh, you know, difficult for some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but these are good schools. So. But right. but the the beginning range school, the three hundred a month, is probably two thousand dollar donation fee. For the donation. Yeah. Okay. And then the matricula is called matricula. Is the um, enrollment. Or enrollment. Enrollment. Uh -huh. enrollment fee is annual and. In their school, I think six hundred a year. Okay. okay. And okay. then and then that three hundred a, a month. month. Um, okay. Yeah. So here's what I hope that you guys take away is you know, and this is obviously just Panama, but whenever you're looking to relocate, particularly to another country outside of the country of your origin, your research is critical. Yes. Um, and you know, Sheree and I have always adopted. We don't go anywhere where we don't know boots on the ground that can show us around. Yeah. And I think one of the things that, that really helped us was you know, we come, came to vacation and Mike was the boots on the ground that showed us around. And it helped us to be able to sort of determine mm -hmm. where and why. Yeah. So for you guys as parents, where do you want to live, why, and then what are the schools mm -hmm. that make sense in those areas so yeah. you don't have to find yourself running all over running all over Panama oh to, to, to do it. And, and it's a little bit different in your case, only because again, you know, you, 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 you have an you, emotional you, attachment, you have an emotional attachment yeah. to that school. And quite frankly, you know, this is, you know, this is home for you. Like, right. so, yeah. so it's not as difficult. If she didn't go to that school, they would be going to another school that's like five minutes from our house. Yeah, right. okay. yeah, which would be like- Yes, they could be in a bicycle going to our school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be way easier, easier yeah. on her uh, because she takes them every day. But, yeah, yeah. Right. but it's just like sometimes you have to look past that and be like, right. you know, okay, right. there's yeah. schools here five minutes away, but like, you know, how does that compare to this school right. 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 that we know right. is top of all? So we're going to put Mike's information in the in the description below if, you know, he is open to taking you guys on, you know, tours that help you actually go and visit those schools. You know, take a vacation, come to Panama, yeah. bring your kids. Mm -hmm. um, I must suggest doing, doing it you know, at a time that makes sense for you, but then definitely reach out and set up those kinds of tours so yeah. that you can go and put your eyes on it. Yeah. Any yeah. parting words, any encouragement, anything you want to share with people, well, let them know. Just off of that, I mean, it's not just a school, it's the neighborhood. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, it's like, there are a lot of schools, but you need to 
make sure that like these surrounding right. areas yeah. where that you would want to live for sure um you know there are good schools in Panama City there are good schools in Boquete mm -hmm. uh, there are good, good schools around Coronado mm -hmm. so like you know there's a lot that goes into it you can't just show up and okay we're going to that school so right, right. <laughs> that part you know it's like getting your boots on the ground and seeing everything right is is huge i mean that's you know it's, it's game game change. Change. Yeah. yeah yeah i have one last thing i want to just talk about real quick before right. we end so we didn't really get into the the language at home how you guys navigate ah, language yeah. at home oh this is funny i'm glad you because mentioned this. Let me get it. Sophie was born in the States? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sophie was born in the States. Yes. Then you came here and had Tyler, Tyler here. Yes. But they both are bilingual. Yes. Yeah. But they don't speak yeah. bilingual with both of you. No, exactly. <laughs> so how does that work? Explain how you they, guys do they that. They can only speak Spanish to me. Only. No English. And only English to my If I friend. speak Spanish to them, they're mm -hmm. just like, no. <laughs> Not that all. Like, English. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it just it doesn't work like that. And if I do speak Spanish, they, it's weird. I they always say that, like, okay? Like, <laughs> like, what did you say? Like they don't, uh, yeah. they don't process it. Right. Like, it, like I said it clearly, but right. they just don't hear it. That okay? Right. What do you say? Or you say what? Because right. You speak so, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so Stephanie, you can tell me. So can Mike really speak? Does he really? Because we hear he speaks Spanish, and we think it's really Spanish. Is he really speaking Spanish? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. No, okay. He, he, he speaks good, but <laughs> but he has the accent. So ah, yeah. so we yeah. wanted to. Need an accent. Well, you have an accent too. I, I know. That's why I don't speak English to them. Right. <laughs> so let me understand the mindset behind that because I think what people may miss is that this isn't just random. You guys are doing this on purpose to help them A, with, the accent. with their accents, yeah. and B, with the ability to switch back and forth yeah. fluently. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So an example, if we're sitting at the dinner table, you know, we're all talking, I'm but funny. if it's, if they're talking to me, it's in English, they're talking to her, it's in Spanish, but it just, it's there's, fluid. Yeah. it's so fluid that, wow. because they don't think about it, it's, yeah. just, it's just natural. Right. And wow. that's, sometimes yeah. I sit there and I, I, I just trip out of that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> that, that is amazing. Right, wow. how y'all do that? Because I always wanted, you know, like, that was a part when, you know, Sophie was born, I was like, yeah, it's going to be so cool, she's bilingual. Yeah. And yeah. now to see that, it's just, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of amazing. It's pretty cool. I think the last thing I want to share with you guys is that one of the things that Sheree and I love about Panama is that it, I always say this, the culture um, is as warm as the climate mm -hmm. yeah. to me. Um, Panamanians by nature are warm people. Yes. Um, they, they don't open up easy, um, but yeah. when they open up, they don't close yes. like your family. Yes. And so I want to encourage you guys that because, you know, we operate on the U.S. dollar here to consider that mm -hmm. the immersion process is a situation. Yes. And when you can find yourself in a position where you can bring your kids and move from wherever you need to are and to where you want to be and immerse your children in that process. If you're thinking about moving abroad, this international school scenario is a, is a trip. You guys, kids, will leave school fluent or speaking three or four languages. Am I right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. even there, yeah. you yeah. get a chance to experience that without y'all having to yeah, be yeah. 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 So, Sophie, learning French. French. Right. Um, you know, maybe uh, sometimes I think she should be learning Mandarin. It's a right. Bit, mm -hmm. Right. Maybe more practical to yeah. do these days. But, mm -hmm. you know, pretty soon she's going to be able to speak in French and we're going to be like, what are you talking about? Right, right. <laughs> like, you know, I, I can do that now, but, you know, I'm just like, that's yeah. not cool. Right. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, guys, let me say this. It was a pleasure. I appreciate y'all jumping through the hoops. Uh, in full disclosure, they are in between. So Sophie is in dance class. They dropped her off, ran over here. Tyler's in the studio. And as soon as we're done this recording, I'm going to grab him and go back to the school, pick her up, and then go home. And I just want to say thank you so much for fitting it in. I mean, yeah. we tried to do this earlier and we, now we've got to work it out. And awesome. so thank you they, they so, so much. Yeah. I really thank appreciate guys. that. Guys, let me say this. At the end of the day, here's what I can promise you. You cannot get to any place of significance by I yourself because we all need, need some help. Y'all be good. We'll catch you on the next edition of Behind Closed Doors with the process. We all need some help. <laughs> right, right. Here, you can put that in. Here, here we go. Here we go. Let's I don't say it near no, 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 no. We'll all say it together. Yeah. Right. And three, two, one. We, we all need some help. help. Love.